Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two of the EFG podcast. I am your host, Christopher Ludiker. Let's get started. Today's video is going to be about why has inflation lasted so long? I think that's a question that everyone has asked. I, for one, am fed up with it. I'm sure everyone else out there is too. There has even been people with the Treasury and the Federal Reserve, and you can go out and find numerous articles on these. One example that I'm going to put in the video is from Janet Yellen, a Treasury Secretary, had even said that the high inflation was simply transitory. However, her, as well as many other experts, have come back to say, you know what, I'm wrong. That was a lie. Well, not necessarily a lie, just a miscalculation, you could say. Part of understanding why has it lasted so long is understanding what is affecting this. And in my opinion, two things that have had a huge impact on inflation and the reason why it has lasted so long is stimulus and the labor market. Now, I want to go over stimulus, what I mean by that. Stimulus is in there's been a lot of money being spent. Consumers have more to spend. So during the pandemic, you know, everyone's like, hey, you go outside, you might pass away. So you need to lock the doors and stay inside. So people didn't go out and spend their money at whatever restaurant or whatever amusement park, which has resulted in an increase in the personal savings that people have. And if anyone was watching stocks during that time, we noticed as we kind of got out of COVID, everything started rebounding and some sectors in particular, like home improvement really shot up because people were staying at home longer, looking around the house and saying, hey, I think my house is ugly. I should probably do something to make it look better. With an increased supply of money, they are able to go and spend that more frivolously. So although prices have gone up, consumers also have more to spend. So both have been going up together. When you have a large supply of cash and a large demand of products and the demand is rising, the supply is not, the price also has to rise. Because of this increase in demand as well, companies have been hiring a lot more to meet that demand. Now I wanna go back to COVID, right? Whenever we had COVID, that really changed the workforce as far as what working from home looks like, how practical it can be. Because once it hit, people didn't have a choice, you could say. People were told to stay at home, work at home, and people liked it. And then a lot of people ended up quitting. So although a lot of people got let off and were no longer working after the pandemic hit, a lot of people didn't go back because they were finding ways to work at home and work for themselves and such. So you have the after effects of COVID, right, where nobody wants to go back to work, but then you have consumers who want to spend more and companies do not have the manpower for it. Compensation and incentives have increased to get and keep employees. It is a job seekers market. Now, at this point, you should have seen a couple different sources on the screen. I will make sure to leave a link to all of the resources that I provide and all the resources that I reference down into the comment section or the about section, whatever YouTube calls that. However, when a business raises wages, they raise the price on goods in response to that. Now, it's not necessarily a robust process where, okay, wages went up $2, all of our goods need to go up 50 cents. Not quite the same, but in a sense, it's true because... Never in the history of ever has a company just kept raising wages and never changed the price of their goods. Maybe I'm wrong. I would thoroughly enjoy someone to prove me wrong on that. Now, I believe the combination of those factors and COVID and us actually transitioning into a time of war where there is conflict between Russia, this kind of makes targeting inflation a moving target. So the Fed has had trouble targeting that targeting what they need to solve because the problem keeps shifting. We noticed a rise in airline tickets. We noticed a rise in gas prices. We noticed a, lot, a rise in groceries and car prices. And although they did kind of happen in the same time frame, they didn't all happen on the same day. 
So again, that kind of throws off the focus point of the Federal Reserve as to what they need to target. Now, I didn't provide data for cars and groceries because I couldn't find any reliable data. And any data I did find, it wasn't consistent. They didn't measure it consistently throughout the years. So I apologize for that lack of information I can provide to y'all. I hope this serves as a brief explanation as to why the Federal Reserve has trouble targeting it. As far as when will it end, my personal opinion, I am expecting 2027-ish, give or take a year. That's when we will be completely done with ridiculous inflation. And if you're really optimistic, I will say 2025. I cannot wait to look back on this video and see how wrong I am. <laughs> I'm not making a prediction, but I, I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, when's it going to end? You must have all the answers. So if I had to, gun to my head, if I had to give you an answer, that's that's my answer. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please show your support in any way. It could be sharing, leaving a like, subscribing. I don't really care. You could just not. Your view is support enough in all reality. So I thank you for your time and have a great day.